emerald is defined by its green color. To be an emerald, a specimen must have a distinctly green color that falls in the range from bluish green to slightly yellowish green. To be an emerald, the specimen must also have a rich color. Stones with weak saturation or light tone should be called green barrel. If the barrel's color is greenish blue, then it is an aquamarine. If it is greenish yellow, it is heliodor. This color definition is a source of confusion. Which you, tone, and saturation combinations are the dividing lines between green barrel and emerald. Professionals in the gem and jewelry trade can disagree on where the lines should be drawn. Some believe that the name emerald should be used when chromium is the cause of the green color, and that stones colored by vanadium should be called green barrel. Calling a gem an emerald instead of a green barrel can have a significant impact upon its price and marketability. This color confusion exists within the United States. In some other countries, any barrel with a green color no matter how faint is called an emerald. Emerald is defined by its green color. To be an emerald, a specimen must have a distinctly green color that falls in the range from bluish green to slightly yellowish green. To be an emerald, the specimen must also have a rich color. Stones with weak saturation or light tone should be called green barrel. If the barrel's color is greenish blue, then it is an aquamarine. If it is greenish yellow, it is heliodor. This color definition is a source of confusion. Which you, tone, and saturation combinations are the dividing lines between green barrel and emerald. Professionals in the gem and jewelry trade can disagree on where the lines should be drawn. Some believe that the name emerald should be used when chromium is the cause of the green color, and that stones colored by vanadium should be called green barrel. Calling a gem an emerald instead of a green barrel can have a significant impact upon its price and marketability. This color confusion exists within the United States. In some other countries, any barrel with a green color no matter how faint is called an emerald. The Mississippi River built this area. Each year it would flood. It would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment, and the sediment would settle over the marsh. And over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time, and under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta. The Mississippi River built this area, each year it would flood, it would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment, and the sediment would settle over the marsh, and over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time. And under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta.
there's little doubt that genetically modified crops have the potential to offer great benefits to the world, yet they continue to be opposed by many people, even though any risks attached to their use have not been clearly established. The reasons seem to be a deep distrust of the motives of large agricultural companies, along with a generalized feeling that it's always dangerous to, as some would put it, play around with nature. There's little doubt that genetically modified crops have the potential to offer great benefits to the world, yet they continue to be opposed by many people, even though any risks attached to their use have not been clearly established. The reasons seem to be a deep distrust of the motives of large agricultural companies, along with a generalized feeling that it's always dangerous to, as some would put it, play around with nature. Two years ago, an earthquake off the coast of Sumatra triggered a tsunami that killed nearly a quarter of a million people. Scientists say Asia is at risk for at least two more massive quakes. One could strike near the source of the 2004 tsunami, the other directly under Tokyo. Two years ago, an earthquake off the coast of Sumatra triggered a tsunami that killed nearly a quarter of a million people. Scientists say Asia is at risk for at least two more massive quakes. One could strike near the source of the 2004 tsunami, the other directly under Tokyo. My current research at the moment is really quite broad. I work at the interface between the arts and humanities, particularly archaeology, but trying to find questions which are very difficult to answer. Unless you start integrating computing and visualizations. So really I work in this boundary between trying to understand cultural questions about the past, but those sorts of questions that you can't address, unless you start reconstructing. Start modeling and visualizing past landscapes, objects and movement of people. My current research at the moment is really quite broad. I work at the interface between the arts and humanities, particularly archaeology, but trying to find questions which are very difficult to answer. Unless you start integrating computing and visualizations. So really I work in this boundary between trying to understand cultural questions about the past, but those sorts of questions that you can't address, unless you start reconstructing. Start modeling and visualizing past landscapes, objects and movement of people. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking as we mentioned, is what's called the OSTnet system. 
the hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking, as we mentioned, is what's called the Ostnet system. The hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanners shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handle record keeping. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanners shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handled record keeping. And as far as getting acquired, I mean, you know, we're trying to focus on the product. I think that if you know a lot of companies are built to be acquired, and I think what happens there is you leave yourself in a really vulnerable spot because you're growing and you say, hey, I want to hire that expensive VP of whatever because, hey, man, any day now we're going to get acquired. And then your product winds up suffering. So I think you need to really want to do the company because you don't know how long you're going to be at it. And luckily, I've been searched a long time. I don't want to stay in search, so you know it's fine with me whatever happens with the company. But you have to focus on building the product to making the product better, and you have to focus on building a sustainable company. And as far as getting acquired, I mean, you know, we're trying to focus on the product. 
I think that if you know a lot of companies are built to be acquired and I think what happens there is you leave yourself in a really vulnerable spot because you're growing and you say hey, I want to hire that expensive VP of whatever because hey, man any day now we're going to get acquired and then your product winds up suffering. So I think you need to really want to do the company because you don't know how long you're going to be at it and luckily I've been searched a long time. I don't want to stay in search, so you know it's fine with me whatever happens with the company. But you have to focus on building the product to making the product better and you have to focus on building a sustainable company. Candice Galen is based at the University of Missouri in Columbia and being a biologist she thought, why not use this astronomical phenomenon to study a biological one? Specifically, as the skies darkened with daytime pollinators, like bumblebees and honeybees, call it quits. What better activity during an eclipse than to go out with a recorder and record the bees? So Gallen asked 400 citizen scientists, including young students, to place audio recorders in 16 flower patches along the path of totality in Oregon. Idaho and Missouri. When they analyzed the audio, they found that during partial eclipse, bee buzzing continued. But when totality hit, the bees went silent and only the conversational buzz of human observers could be heard. Then, as the moon passed and the sun again lit up the sky, the bees regained their buzz. Candice Galen is based at the University of Missouri in Columbia. And, being a biologist, she thought, why not use this astronomical phenomenon to study a biological one? Specifically, as the skies darkened with daytime pollinators, like bumblebees and honeybees, call it quits. What better activity during an eclipse than to go out with a recorder and record the bees? So Galen asked 400 citizen scientists, including young students, to place audio recorders in 16 flower patches along the path of totality in Oregon, Idaho, and Missouri. When they analyzed the audio, they found that during partial eclipse, bee buzzing continued. But when totality hit, the bees went silent and only the conversational buzz of human observers could be heard. Then, as the moon passed and the sun again lit up the sky, the bees regained their buzz. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. The upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. The upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty.
I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. I'm a big fan of gap years. I took one myself, so I'm probably biased. I think that if you've got something you want to do in the year before you come to university, that you should do it. And a lot of students who want to study a biology degree actually want to go off and travel and perhaps work on a conservation project. And of course, that's all very good. It will contribute towards your degree and your preparation for that. And then when you come to us, you'll be ready for your studies. So if there's something you really want to do, then my advice is to go for it. I'm a big fan of gap years. I took one myself, so I'm probably biased. I think that if you've got something you want to do in the year before you come to university, that you should do it. And a lot of students who want to study a biology degree actually want to go off and travel and perhaps work on a conservation project. And of course, that's all very good. It will contribute towards your degree and your preparation for that. And then when you come to us, you'll be ready for your studies. So if there's something you really want to do, then my advice is to go for it. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. 
So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram. But we are really interested in the underlying message. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram. But we are really interested in the underlying message. My name is Posey D, and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands. I work with a shoe company. And we work with a team of young people across Europe who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, boxers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still, I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like, oh God, have to go to work again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. My name is Posey D and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands, I work with a shoe company, and we work with a team of young people across Europe who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, boxers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like oh god, have to go to work, again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. Working together, they figured out that if the government was going to propose some kinds of significant tax increases, which is a good strategy, quite me to at least tie something like getting something for those big tax breaks, not seeing any results. 
So the result of that was in the package of legislation that included the tax increases. There was also information to have significant expansion of coverage families where they can buy into their private insurance. Working together, they figured out that if the government was going to propose some kinds of significant tax increases, which is a good strategy, quite me to at least tie something like getting something for those big tax breaks, not seeing any results. So the result of that was in the package of legislation that included the tax increases. There was also information to have significant expansion of coverage families where they can buy into their private insurance. UK has an aging population as a result of decline in birth fertility rate and mortality rate. This has led to a declining proportion of the population age under 60 and an increasing proportion age 65 and over. In every year since 1901, with the exception of 1976, there have been more births and deaths, and the population has grown due to natural change. Until the mid 1990s, this natural increase was the main driver of population growth. UK has an aging population as a result of decline in birth fertility rate and mortality rate. This has led to a declining proportion of the population age under 60 and an increasing proportion age 65 and over. In every year since 1901, with the exception of 1976, there have been more births and deaths, and the population has grown due to natural change. Until the mid 1990s, this natural increase was the main driver of population growth. I'm going to talk today about how to change people's behavior. That is changed intentionally on a broad scale. How to change behavior with a specific goal in mind. This is a very common objective of social scientists and policymakers seeking to ameliorate social problems for, of course human behavior is at the heart of many of our current social problems. So for example, if people would just stop driving SUVs, keeping their houses so warm, tossing recyclables into the trash and leaving lights and appliances on. We could reduce our carbon emissions significantly. If they would watch with their 30 minutes of exercise each day, we use sunscreen to buckle up and drink in moderation. We could improve our quality of life and at the same time reduce pressure on our health care system. I'm going to talk today about how to change people's behavior. That is changed intentionally on a broad scale. How to change behavior with a specific goal in mind. This is a very common objective of social scientists and policymakers seeking to ameliorate social problems for, of course human behavior is at the heart of many of our current social problems. So for example, if people would just stop driving SUVs, keeping their houses so warm, tossing recyclables into the trash and leaving lights and appliances on. We could reduce our carbon emissions significantly. If they would watch with their 30 minutes of exercise each day, we use sunscreen to buckle up and drink in moderation. 
we could improve our quality of life and at the same time reduce pressure on our health care system. A nutrition expert at the University for What Him Unknown, say the simple sugar and candy bars can give you a quick boost. But after the initial rush, you usually crush it feel worse than before the snap. They say what you need is complex carbohydrates like a bagel or a bowl of not sugar coating cereal. Try carrying a variety of pack size box to work with you and buying a small carton of milk from the vending machine. Carbohydrates help you sustain a blood sugar level that is neither too high nor too low. That means you have a steady flow of energy to finish your day. A nutrition expert at the University for What Him Unknown, say the simple sugar and candy bars can give you a quick boost. But after the initial rush, you usually crush it feel worse than before the snap. They say what you need is complex carbohydrates like a bagel or a bowl of not sugar coating cereal. Try carrying a variety of pack size box to work with you and buying a small carton of milk from the vending machine. Carbohydrates help you sustain a blood sugar level that is neither too high nor too low. That means you have a steady flow of energy to finish your day. Lawrence Stephen Lowy was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowy is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits, and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Lawrence Stephen Lowy was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowy is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits, and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death.